Hello, everybody. Welcome to this long-awaited FAQ <laughs> video. <laughs> We've been traveling for one year, and we wanted to make this FAQ like video. I caught COVID. I just stayed at home. I just been recovering for two weeks, so now we finally get to go yeah. and do this video. We have all the questions ready. Nico got them all up from his Instagram account. Yeah, I got some from Instagram, and my family asked some questions, and yeah, I'm just excited to answer some. <laughs> yes. So for our first question, da, 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 da. Yeah, what? I, well, hold on. I wrote these questions, so uh, my mm -hmm. writing isn't the best, but it's better than Hazel's. So, <laughs> what's one thing you took for granted before that you learned to appreciate? Should Should I read it through your travels? What's one thing you took for granted before that you learned to appreciate through your travels? Okay, I have one. I have a few. For me is the Brita filter I have at home because Brita water. Hold on, <laughs> let me just hold on one second. A water filter that I use all the time, straight from the tap, and I just drink it. Okay, fine. <laughs> let me think of another one. Brita water, come on. Give me, let me give think me. of. Mm. My space at home. One thing I realized is that traveling, going to different areas, not every place or Airbnb has the same amount of cleanliness you do. And I'm a germaphobe, so I like to keep certain things are like just really clean. But one thing I realized that during our travel, not everybody has those standards. And I appreciate, yeah, just like my cleanliness at home. So one thing I learned to appreciate was definitely, there's a lot of things I think, but like the first thing that comes to mind is how much like my parents did at home because i was just too spoiled the amount like my dad would cook every day even after work and then like my mom would do like laundry like i just didn't help as much as like i could have but then i learned how to do it all myself now like like i even messaged my dad i'm like thank you for cooking like i really appreciate it i do all the cooking now whoa 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 I do 80% of the cooking now. Mm. 70. Like I actually learned how to cook and like now we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of our space. We have to clean up. We've got to do everything. Like it's like, even though like it's traveling, it's really our first time actually like moving out and being an adult. So. In a different country without any external support. It's just us. Yeah. Like, you know, like I feel like <laughs> if I moved out, my family would come over like every week and just like give me some food but really no it's like super independent it's just us we have to make sure that we're we are able to survive with whatever we have because we really don't have anyone else to fall back on if we need to support it's like they're in another yeah. country we're we're it's just us too so and it was kind of difficult too when you had covid because i literally took on that role plus work and i felt bad every time i couldn't like get up on time to make you a proper breakfast instead of just slapping oatmeal and not just putting your fruits in. And it felt bad, but then that part of me, it was just like, okay, I need to conserve my energy for my client and I would rest, but every time I rest, it would only be a limited amount of time, it'd be like 20 minutes. Like, okay, back to cooking, back to laundry, back to cleaning. It's true, like all I have is Hazel. All Hazel has is me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like that's something too, like, you know, just having that support of family, friends, is makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, next. Okay, I'm gonna turn. I got it. I'm gonna choose this. Wait, wait, let me mix. What experience do you like the best? In terms of what? I'll answer like this. What experience have we done that we like the best? Like, what's the best? Okay, like, you okay. go first. Actually, no, no. I just posted on Instagram. I basically get answered this question. We're not at the pace of like backpackers, but we're not situated in one city for the whole year and like a real digital nomad. We did so much. I would say like we did bioluminance. The bioluminance. Yeah, bioluminance uh, tour. Yeah, with the plankton in Mexico. Um, we did whale watching Ecuador. Yeah. Cenote tour. Horseback riding in Jardin. Those are all really nice. Paragliding. Oh. Hazel did paragliding four times. Yeah. I did three times. <laughs> oh, and then the cave tour. That was amazing. Oh yeah, the cave tour that everyone thought we were like we were just crazy because like you know like, they're like. I would never do that, but like 
it was, was really cool. It was really cold, yeah. but um, it was a different experience that we weren't expecting. Yes, zip lining. We did twice, three times. Overall, like, like we have these experiences. I would say like just the actual lifestyle is what I like the best. Like actually being a digital nomad and being able to do, be, being able to go wherever we want, whenever we want, making our own schedule. I think the whole experience as a whole, what I would say is the best experience. <laughs> yeah. How do y'all eat so much yummy food without getting fat? Is it less processed or are you both active a lot? So we do eat a lot of yummy food and I actually eat a lot more here compared to Canada. I really do believe that the food here is a lot less processed. I feel like the food here is more fresh because we're actually at the source. And for example, if you go to stores like Ocean, you will always see like the fruits there, like all situated from South America, like product of Mexico, product of Ecuador, product of Colombia. And since we're always getting a rip from like the, the root, I really feel like our bodies is processing it much better. There's, la like, there's less active ingredients, chemicals. Number two, we are active a lot. I actually like to walk for hours and I never left that activity. I mean, one thing, I, we definitely walk way more than we do in Canada because like the cities that we go, the towns we go to are more walkable. In Canada, you just need a car. You're lazy for everything. It's more like if you need to do the groceries, you're gonna go into the car, drive. We're walking all the time. That's one, but I forgot. Someone said something about like, since we're not stressed, you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh yeah, so um, there's a scientific fact where when you're a lot more stressed, you tend to hold more body fat because that's a safety mechanism for your body. And one person asks us, are we constantly stressed? because we don't have much body fat. We actually lost a lot of body fat since we've been traveling. I truly believe that like the environment in Canada, the energy Canada has is a lot more stressful compared to Latin America where everybody here is more relaxed, calm down in the moment. Hardest thing you've done so far? Mm. Okay, you wanna go first or me? The first thing that comes to my mind was like our Otavalo hike. During the protests, of Ecuador, we decided to hike with all our bags. It wasn't just hard because we we're carrying so much luggage. It was stressful. It was scary. We slept on the streets. I don't know. Like it's there's nothing like as a whole experience. Yeah, nothing comes close. I don't think like like my body was exhausted. My mind was like stressed. I'm not the type to even worry about like what food am I gonna eat tomorrow or like in a few hours. I do have the luxury to get any food I want any time. But that was the first time I felt what it's like to be homeless. Like I really had to surrender to God, to be honest. I'm Christian myself and... So how about your fears about uh, getting robbed this trip? I got my legs. <laughs> my flexibility, I have grip. I would always pray, 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 please protect me, please protect me. And even at night, I was starving. Cause we were hiking for like what the first like first day was twelve hours, yeah, right around yeah. there, and like nonstop with so much like baggage, I felt like I got like scoliosis, scoliosis, <laughs> and at the moment we we got to like the refugee site, the little hut, people were passing potatoes with their bare hands, and I'm a germaphobe. No, 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 no. I had a trigger. Like, oh no, they didn't wash their hands. But a part of me was like, I need that right now. Like, I need that. And I was so grateful. I still remember they put one, like the Venezuelan family put a one slice of meat, salt, potato, boiled potato. <sighs> yeah, we were, we were starving. Like there was like no restaurants open. Sometimes we see a panaderia and we just get some bread. We share with the family. Yeah, and I don't know. I felt. That yeah. This whole experience basically deserves its own video, which I'll get to one day. Oh, but the I would say the second most hardest part of our journey was being in Otavalo itself during Baro. Because every single day we didn't know what we're going to eat. Milk and eggs were running out. There was no more meat. We were just eating bread, basically. We were in Otavalo for, was it three weeks? Three weeks. And for like two of those weeks, we were like, no. We're stranded. No. What? It was literally like the third day 
of being in Otovalo, everything shut down. Because I'm here preaching about abundance and mindset, and I'm here like, what am I going to eat tomorrow? What are we going to eat this morning? Oh my god, we have no more oatmeal! There's no more milk. What do we do? <laughs> to be honest, I would say during this whole year, I experience luxury, wealth, but also nothing. So we're duality, I would say. Yeah. How much is your budget? And how are you fin financially financing your travels? We do have a budget, and we're not trying to go over two grand a month. Yeah. Yeah, like another, yeah. I, would, I feel good at 1500 Yeah, for both of us. Yeah, and it's not rent, this is like our entire expense for two people. Yeah. So, yeah. Just times we've been cheaper, spending like 1300 It all depends been, on the city. Times we've been more expensive, like 2000 we hit that. Yeah, but generally we spend like maybe 600 max on Airbnb per month. Then the rest goes into food and activities. Um, when we go out to eat, like I would like to spend like $4 per meal. Like, like three days ago, we spent like $20 each on a fancy dinner. And now we're like, okay, let's chill, let's chill because like we spent like 20 bucks. <laughs> Which is a lot to us because like $4 is like... Yeah, because like you can get spend. we can you you can get a three course meal for like two fifty or three dollars. Sometimes even one fifty. It's possible to get a dollar fifty. Yeah, for a three course meal, that's not the best. That's more carbs, like more rice and potato than meat. We don't do that. We usually stick the two fifty three dollar option. Yeah, we're like we're honestly like yeah we're yeah the one dollar fifty range is not for us. Yeah, but the two dollar fifty. We yeah. can get a good deal. And if you're four dollars, you know it's really nice. Mm, the They're four dollar really ones. Nice. Ooh, the yeah. four dollar ones are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I mean. If you, if you know you can always get food from that price point, you question yourself, why would I get a meal for 20 bucks? Yeah, because like, like financially we can't afford $20 for a meal, but it's more so like, why? What's the purpose if we can get a nice bougie one for four bucks? Yeah, the $4 ones like touches my heart, you know? Yeah. The 250 ones, like they do the job. The dollar fifty ones, those ones, I don't know how much I can trust those ones. Yeah. yeah. How fresh it is. Okay, wait, wait. We had another part for that question. How are you uh, financially? No, how are you financing our it? Our travels, yeah. yeah. So, okay, you want to go? Yeah. So it's through project. <laughs> so yeah, my, my friends always make fun of me. Dilvir, especially. Dilvir. Basically just Dilvir. He's always like, oh, yeah, you're going to that fancy place. Hazel's taking you out, huh? Like, he's, this guy's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, basically. So yeah, we worked together yeah. for the business, which slowly happened. Like, I, I was just a supporter for, like, everything. And just, like, recording and stuff. Yeah. And then eventually, like... He started getting more hands-on to it. I started asking him a lot of questions. He ended up giving me a lot of support. Then I asked him, like, do you want to work together? And it was interesting, too, because... When around the time we met, it was right before COVID happened, and I told him that I'm, I'm studying, I'm getting my certification, my diplomas on becoming a life coach, and he's like, what's that? And now he's here. <laughs> yeah, so that's how, that's how we're funding the business. But it is scary because sometimes, at the beginning at least, like, at the beginning, we weren't so ready to leave at that moment. It was like, we still had some debt, not me, but Hazel had some debt, and it was like a struggle because like, not even just like we're spending money as we're going we have to make money just to pay off her debt which is now is like gone we're in a better situation from when we started but there's times where we don't know how much money we're gonna make because you know like it, it fluctuates yeah but now we're our monthly income is actually pretty stable oh this is for you who was nico a year ago versus the nico now Okay, you can answer this too, you know. Okay, but well, hold on. Who was Nico a year ago versus Nico now? Okay, let me just think. I, I, a lot of things have changed. Okay, let me just do like a small example. So like in Toronto, in Canada, I would like to wear a lot of black, and white. And white. And like, just like plain colors, just because like, for me it was simple. Like I just, I was like, whatever, it looks good. My shopping decisions have changed. Like, I won't wear black 
you know? Like, I like, actually like to wear color. Like, I feel better wearing color. I like to be brighter. I like to buy things that are local, but, like, everything's local here. That's the thing. Like, I, I meet the person who makes the earrings that I buy, you know? Like, I'm in that specific town, and they specify, like, on indigenous craft or something. I, I really value a clothes, I guess? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I... I, I yeah. Mm-hmm. But what else? There's more. There's more things okay, that are different. Here. Okay. What the? What are the skills you develop versus Nico back then? The skills? Oh shoot. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So like I before, I didn't even know how to take care of myself. Really. Like you know. Like I I could if I wanted to, but like, I was lazy. Like now it's more like yo. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this place up. Like I'm gonna do the dishes. Like I'm gonna cook. Like I learned how to cook. I didn't know how to cook before. Even Spanish, I learned so much. Like you know. Like I learned so much. I I, I dedicated myself to learn Spanish and then. Back then, I didn't know any Spanish, so like now it's like, oh, I learned so much. Um, my hair is longer, like, I don't know, like, <laughs> I look different, <laughs> you know? How about your mindset? What my changed? mindset? I would say mindset wise, I'm still similar. <laughs> no. No? No. Okay, tell me, well, how am I different? So before Nico, he was very optimistic. So and pessimistic now. <laughs> he's so optimistic, but. If I see him but back then, he was living in this like first world bubble. He would see certain struggles but wouldn't know how to empathize with it as much. But compared to now, especially with the Venezuelan hike, he actually values certain things with greater purpose. So like, for example, back then he wouldn't even like throw out a shirt if it has no use, but like he actually values it more. He wouldn't waste food more. He he's in, he's just in more gratitude with life. You're in more gratitude with life. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, I I'll see take that. It. You know, like, uh, sometimes you don't even realize the things that um, have changed within you, right? Like, it's just mm. some slow process, especially over a year. So, thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, one thing, too. Um, I know before he would be like, okay, I'm, I'm minimal, but should I invest in a new thing? Now, Nico's more like, I don't need to. If other people are wearing this, why do I need to do this? You know? What do you mean? Because, like, I remember, um, like, you do treat yourself and stuff, but when we go shopping, you're a lot more intentional with what you have right now. Like, you wouldn't just get it because it's just nice. You wouldn't just get it because it's a craft. It's more like, will you actually value this as much as the clothes you have right now? That's true. Yeah. yeah. We definitely shop way less. That's both of us. Like, yeah. shopping, like, literally, I have one, two, three. Three sweaters. This is my third sweater. Like, I really don't two have Two sweaters? It. Yeah. I wouldn't get another sweater. Even if I liked a sweater, I just can't justify it because my other sweaters are in good condition. But that's, that's part of like the backpacking side of our trip where we really can't carry too much. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's a different mentality. Mm -hmm. Okay, your turn. What, what, um, what's different about Hazel? A lot, a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot. So Hazel back then, she had a lot of ADHD tendencies, a lot, a lot, a lot. It was to the point where even it bothered Nico. We had fights about it, a little, I mean, arguments, I would say. And that would trigger me because, like, this is how I'm just used to living. Like, this is just me. But then being in this space, because I never lived with anyone before, and being in this space together, I really had to unlearn my habits, unlearn behavioral thought patterns to, you know, have a peaceful household. And the second thing, too, is that I'm not used to going out of my comfort zone from like living on the street to not knowing my income the next month to where we're going to be three, year, three months from now. But now I'm learning to just literally like even live more in the now. Mm. Yeah. I value a lot of friendships a lot more differently. I actually look into values a lot more into a person because just even like Otavala changed me because it humbled me more knowing that like my opportunities that I have in life is very privileged. It's very privileged. And that's one of the things that I'm really grateful for for waking up in the morning. That was a really good answer. I'm talking about my hair. <laughs> I'm talking about oh. shopping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, and yeah, even in terms of hair, before I had a lot of insecurities with my hair because my hair is quite thin. But I'm here chopping it up and doing the most and going against the grain. And even with my clothes, I try to shop more intentionally with fabrics that suits to my values. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next. Are you nervous about going back home? 
So, I met a friend named Ashley yesterday. And Ashley, if you're watching this video, hello. She's from Toronto, she quit her job. And she really hates Canada. I do too, passionately. I swear, that was like the biggest thing we bonded over yesterday and we were just talking and talking passionately towards it. How am I supposed to go back home, go to downtown Toronto, and the nearest, healthiest food that's cheap is Chipotle. So in total, I'm paying like 12 bucks, 15 bucks for a meal that's not even fresh. It's all processed. Okay. Second of all, Toronto's culture is so hustle mentality. How am I supposed to go back to that when everybody's driving towards a bigger thing that's based on ego? When here, people are just living relaxed, slow, and like they actually enjoy life for the way it is. I do miss my friends and my family. So that's one thing. I wish I could just bring them here. But in general, I'm not nervous. I'm more worried about going back to Toronto. This morning, I had a nightmare that I was in Canada. I, I woke up, I'm like, he's gonna have a nightmare. Yesterday, she was like, Nico, I had a nightmare. And it, it was related to being back in Canada. I was finally, I was like, I was gonna go home and I was surprising my mom. And then like, you know, I was like vlogging. I was like, yeah, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna surprise my mom. And then like, like, it was just like all the energy drained out of my body. And it was just like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do when I get back. Like, you know, like we can, we can survive and be digital nomads, go wherever we want, freedom. But then like my family moved to Cambridge. What am I gonna do in Cambridge? I have no idea, like, you know, and what am I gonna, like, what's, what's there for me when I get back? Like, I have family and I miss them. Like, I have friends, like, I wanna hang out all the time. Like, what would be my reason to be back other than that? Other than my relationships with people that I have in Canada? Yeah, same. I don't, I don't know, like, also, like there's, there's a lot of things I actually don't like about Canada too. Like, I'm so comfortable living in Latin America because the infrastructure of like how cities are built are really important to me. Like I, I really need to be able to walk outside, get milk, come back home, like without a car, you know, like I, I the car focused society is just, it's something that turns me off because needing a car restricts your freedom so much. And then people in North America don't really realize it until you leave, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's one thing I really appreciate Latin America. Cause let's say you are situated in one city if you, you can take an hour trip somewhere and you're in a totally different place. Canada? <laughs> what is that? Flat? Yeah, if you want to experience something completely different, you got to go to Alberta, Vancouver. And that's know? a $400 ticket for us. It's only $6, $5 for both of us to go to another city and hike. For example, let's say Ecuador. I have access to the beach. I have access yeah, to the, the, mountains. the mountains, the Amazon, like all within a, like a bus trip, like wake up somewhere completely different. Yeah. Yeah, and Canada, it's, it's just so flat. And then like the road trips suck too because it's so flat. All you see is highway, trees and like. Yeah, and like this <laughs> thing, what are you going to anyway? It's gonna be the same, like more or less. Cause like, for example, if you live in Mississauga, you want to take an hour trip, you go to Hamilton or like Markham. But most of the times you're there for a shop or for food. You can go all the way to Markham to get some bubble tea. Hamilton You're, for a, like one little waterfall. Yeah, you really don't realize how much you have or how much you don't have once you have it, you know? Yeah. Okay, the biggest factor here is like why I'd be like stressed to go back is that we can't, we actually can't afford living in Canada. Like trying to rent, our rent would be the same amount as how much we spend for both of us together. Like, like 1500, like how much do you pay for rent? I, uh, yeah, probably like 1500. Cause like here, like I don't have to budget. <laughs> I literally tried making a video, like trying to spend one hundred dollars in one day, and I, I it's was so hard. hard. <laughs> Granted, it was it was locked down out of like battle, but like still. It, it was, was hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah we 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 are nervous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next. <clears throat> okay. What's your favorite thing you've collected along your journey? Who has Ooh. this? What's this? Who, who knows we're collecting things like that? A few things I've collected that I'm really grateful for is, so in Merida, I got the, well, Nico bought me this beautiful pendant. Um, it's Hade. It's so nice and it's, it's swirls. And it's only specialized in that area. I also got like a beautiful pearl um, bracelet. It's really special because 
it's only from that area, from Puerto Lopez. We have to go in that area, like in that little town. In the little community, yeah. Yeah, because like they, they told me that they don't sell it anywhere else. And it, it's true, because other areas we went through the beaches, I didn't see it. We collected a lot of things. And the, the, the cool things about like what we collected is that we remember exactly where we got it. Who we bought it from. And we know that it's, it's from the city. Like, you know, like, oh, like this is um, like indigenous sweater. Like, Otavalo. Indigenous art from Otavalo. I got these earrings. Oh, no. <laughs> Hazel got these earrings for me. From Otavalo. Otavalo. <laughs> and you can't find these, like, compared to Canada, when you buy something. Most likely it's from a chain, like a shop. Yeah, like, like if you're trying to go to, like, or... you're trying to get some cool earrings, where are you going? Like, I don't know. Simon's! Like Kensington Market, and then, like, I don't know. Most it's... likely they're gonna have the same copy for other people, but, like, this, he won't find it anywhere else. Issue. Tanjiro! Oh, I don't even know if you can hear me. Yeah, see these earrings? <sighs> these are the earrings Hazel got me. I guess they're my favorite thing I ever have. I feel like Tanjiro. <laughs> you have long hair too. I know. <laughs> yeah, the earrings are my favorite thing that I've collected. Next. Okay. Oh, what is your biggest culture shock moment? Probably Oaxaca for me, because it's the Latin of festivals, like festivities. And I was so shocked that fireworks were growing on every day. People were celebrating weddings every like everyone was getting married. There's always be puppeteers, there's always a reason for us to be celebrate and like having shots. Like that to me was a big culture shock because like in Canada, like I said, it's very hustle, hustle, hustle. And then you party because you want to get drunk and you were most likely running away. But here in Oaxaca, everybody's just celebrating life. Oh, another one too for me would be Oaxaca, the food. We didn't have to Google review or Google search any restaurants. The food was always fire. Yeah, <laughs> in, in North America it's more like you have to. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into a red place and like not Google and see the reviews because there's a, there's a lot of misses. There's a lot of misses in Canada. It's all about hype in Canada. Yeah. In Colombia, for me, the biggest culture shock I had was, is the beauty part. And it was weird because it was like, literally, you go to a store, even the mannequins have this fake butt. Like, you know, it's like crazy. It's like, it's just different. Like I'd be walking and there's a butt blocking the whole sidewalk because this girl's like facing this and like I just can't like I gotta go around <laughs> <Can't> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have nothing against people who do it but it's more about this cultural thing that like that pressures people to do so you know like it's a cultural part where I don't really like it you know like you go to the store and the mannequins have unrealistic butts you know I, I think that's the part where it's like the shocking part to me yeah yeah um Ecuador the love I felt from Mexico is similar to the love I feel here in Ecuador, where we are right now. Because everybody's just so inviting. Yeah, especially like, here in Cuenca. Yeah. Especially like Cuenca, because I think Cuenca, there's probably other parts that are really nice in, in Ecuador, parts that aren't as nice, but in Cuenca, where we are right so now. So much love. Because like from what we experience in Colombia, I'm just so used to not people inviting us. At first, it was like shocked. Like, why isn't people like welcoming us to their house? Like. So they want to be friends with us, right? And then after that, going to from Colombia to Ecuador, people were invited us. So they're like, oh yeah, I forgot love exists. <laughs> Ecuador and Mexico have a lot of similarities, and it's like the culture shock for us is just like going back to Mexico. It's like, whoa, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, love, appreciation. Yeah. Um, anything else specific? Oh, culture. Okay, another thing is like there's so many indigenous people in Ecuador. At least like depending where you, depending where you go, but then we're I was like for me it was like. They're literally playing flutes and stuff. And like, I was like, I'll be like dancing to the, like, the flutes. It's so cool. Like, like you know, like, I'll be like, <laughs> and then, like, you know, I loved it. Like, because we were in Otovalo and we, even though like we were in lockdown, it was so cool because like, in general in Canada, I would never see like the community and see them doing their traditions. Like, I, I might sadly see somebody on the street struggling in Toronto, in, Ecuador, when I see indigenous communities, they're, there's actual communities, you know, and they have their culture, they have their tradition. And here, it's more like, you know, if you're trying to learn about indigenous culture, it's like, it still exists, you know, yeah. it's, still, it's still prevalent. So that's like my other Ecuadorian uh, culture, culture shock. shock. Yeah. We have three more. Okay. Favorite country and why? Mexico. 
Oh, but then Ecuador is number two. Like it's like it's very close actually. Very close. Um, what else? I think it'll just be the food. Like really. Food and festivals. Food and yeah, there was, there's. Uh, it's just because of the places we went to too yeah. as well. You know what I mean? If if we didn't go to Oaxaca, Ecuador. <laughs> yeah, if we didn't go to Oaxaca, Ecuador for sure. <laughs> but then Oaxaca is like our favorite city of all. Like. All like, my travels. Yeah, so then like it carries Mexico that high, but then food too is like. Like, I, I would be so excited to eat. Colombia, I was cooking up all the time, you know, like, food to me is like, it's very, very, very important. Yeah. The question is, I'd love to hear y'all's mental health and healthy lifestyle changes post leaving Canada. It's been great. Um, okay, well, let me talk about, like, fruits and vegetables are so cheap and fresh that literally we would, we buy big bags and- And the soil is still on the food. <laughs> Like the, like, the food would be really fresh and like in Canada, I would like, I, it kind of feels sad paying five bucks and I get like this container of strawberries and blueberries. Yeah. Like, I, Especially in Ottawa, that's where we got the most deals for like our fruits in general, I'd say. We would get like, like maybe almost like two libs, like two pounds of strawberries for one dollar and they were fresh and huge. All these strawberries. They were thick. Mental, okay, mental health, okay, the one I like is that there's no winter. I don't get those winter blues. Um, I think maybe it's just a lot of it has to do with the sky even being gray. Like, I don't know, like... Okay, I beg to differ. Ecuador has been gray. Ecuador? It is gray right now. It but is gray. you're happy. No. I do feel... <laughs> no, but like, okay, the difference is for six months, it's gray. For six months, it's gray and it's like moody and you don't want to go outside. It's so cold. Honestly, you know exactly what I mean. If you're in Canada, you know exactly what, it like, what it's like to be like, yeah. I don't know, shut down in, in your house in the winter. Like, but here it's summer every day, basically. So. I know. And that's why everybody just gets used to this lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I, like I, I, do, I do like it's never budgeting, you know, like I... I can go and be like, hey, so let's go get this, get this. Like, when we go to the grocery store, we'll, we'll get as much as we want. We, we actually don't yeah. hold back. The only limitation, though, is because since we travel every month, we try to not get too much or else we won't finish and we waste food. Yeah. And with Otovalo, I have a big opposition on wasting food or wasting anything, to be honest. <laughs> I would say the mental health in Canada, there's a lot more pressure, I feel, but here there's no pressure at all because the whole country, the whole continent is relaxed. <laughs> When you live in Canada and things are just easy for you, a lot of times it could feel like easy, you're bored, what's your purpose? Why you wake up in the morning, right? For us, at least right now, we have this purpose of really trying to survive off this business because that's our mission. And our mission every day is to make it slowly to Argentina, which sometimes I forget because we stay in places for so long. But <laughs> literally, we have a mission here. And like in Canada, sometimes it just doesn't feel like you have a real reason to be I mean, what's your reason? You just work every day, trying to climb a ladder maybe, and then like get some more income, save, buy a house. Is that something that fulfills you? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I feel like that's not my personal answer. I would say like... No, the same. Yeah. Because like, for example, a lot of people I know that in Canada are always trying to chase something, work on something. What was the last time they were, they were okay just doing nothing <laughs> without anything? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like all, all these questions is like something we could like make a whole video of just that question. This video, this video is gonna be so long. How long is the recording for? Whoa! <laughs> okay. No, but yeah, that's one thing I noticed about Canada because here everybody knows how to live in the moment and to see life in a bigger perspective. Whereas Canada, a lot of people just watch Netflix, chase the next trends. But like here, there's. There are trends, but it's more so like, are you going to choose that route or are you going to choose your own individuality? Mm. And a lot of times when we talk about people too, they also, um, we're also talking about the other digital nomads, other expats who, whom left their country and also like are living yeah. here. And those are like our friends as well. It's weird because there's like also this reflection of nomads and then the locals. So like in Cuenca, the people are, the local people are so welcoming. It's the exact same as, uh, for the expats, right? Yeah. Whatever country you're going to go to will reflect on the type of people there are and what will attract, right? Can I say that right? Okay, let me just give you an example. <laughs> like, if we're going to Medellin, there's 
There is way too many old white dudes looking for mating season. <laughs> Because of this culture of beauty and like vanity, it's like and sexuality it, and lust. Yeah, it attracts these types of expats and digital nomads. So then, like, it's uh, what was the question again? Why am I why am I even talking about this? No, um, no, but basically, you're saying that people from Ecuador are generally nice. The expats we've met are really nice, and they have similar values of how we feel about North America coming to Latin America. What was the question? ADHD. Oh, mental health yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So, so yeah, to answer the question, um, our mental health has been really great. We have one more question. Was it rock, paper, scissors? Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh my god, I always lose. And I always win, but kudos to him for always trying to two and a half years. <laughs> so last question is, when are you coming back? Okay, so we've been traveling for a year now. Our goal was Argentina. Um, we've only made it to three countries. Is country. Argentina. Oh yeah. Our goal is Argentina. We've only been to three countries and we have Peru, Bolivia. Chile. Chile, I don't know because it's expensive. And then Argentina. Argentina. And after we work our way down to Argentina, to probably Buenos Aires or even all the way down, we have no idea. We were gonna work our way back up slowly. Um, there's gonna be parts that maybe we do want to go back to or maybe parts that we haven't explored yet Like El Salvador I don't know, but like yeah. Guatemala um, When we're coming back? 2024? We, we give it to God 2024? <laughs> 2024? <laughs> so yeah guys, those are the questions that you guys asked me If you have any more, I would love to do another future video If I felt like a there was a question that we could just keep going and going. Like maybe we'll add some more FAQs later on. Maybe uh, what we've learned two years after traveling yeah. or something, you know? But so yeah, we've been traveling for a year, three countries, our goal is Argentina. We have more to show you. Yeah, so. more stories to tell. Bye. Stay tuned. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>